Oh, so good to be back on a Wednesday. It's always nice to be at my house. You know it's a Wednesday because I'm wearing... Wait a second. What was Wednesday? Oh, wait a second. Give me one moment, folks. There we go. That's better now. Let's see if I can get this back in. I knew something was wrong. Yeah, normally on Veterans Day, I wear, of course, one of my most patriotic shirts ever. You can't be more patriotic than a Stars and Stripes kitten t-shirt. Yes, eventually I'll change back into this because you know what last Wednesday was? It was Veterans Day. I'd be remiss in my duty as a true American if I did not have my Veterans Day tribute. And now with that all being said and done, give me one moment again, folks. There we go. I'm back. I revert back to wrestling t-shirt wearing Hobo Tom. For I am Hobo Tom, the one, the only Hobo Tom. You're watching the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling channel? Yeah, you just witnessed my very brief tribute to Veterans Day. It's something that pops up just once a year. I like to look special. You can tell I'm back into wrestling reviewer mode of my... Nice wrestling t-shirt on, because I'm bullet, bullet, bullet club. For life. So yeah, let's talk about some AEW, but before I get into AEW, I have some shout-outs to give. Alberto El Obero. You, sir? You got tossed? Fife Dog, you sir can crawl out of here.
see here. Fra la la. You saw that luchador on the forklift. You best play change. You sort of earned that six count. And Paint Huffington, you sir are a master of the air guitar.
So with all that being said, there are going to be some changes to the Hobo Studio. Eventually, this chair's pneumatics is failing. I've had this chair for 10 years. Um, eventually, I'm going to switch that up with my office chair. I think right now they're about the same height, but the office chair, the pneumatics are a little bit fresher. I think I'm going to have to go with that big, comfy gamer chair eventually. I think I saw a nice one for like 60 bucks. This time I treat myself to something right, because I know for the most part I sit down in a chair for 40 hours a week, and every so often my ass hurts. And of course, with with scoring season coming up, I'll be sitting in this chair quite frequently, and the bungee cord chair, even though it's comfortable, gives me a waffle butt. So, might be a few changes going on. There will always be the door of wrestling, however. And if you were watching my previous show, my live stream, I showed some really old Hobo and Girlfriend specials. Um, Hobo and Girlfriend, actually, yeah, YouTube shows. Not so much specials. They, they weren't specials for a while. But man, I'll tell you what. That door looked pretty bare back there. In fact, I think in the one show I showed, I might do that more often for, um, especially if they show a lot of commercials. I'll probably show that every so often. Go back to a classic hobo and girlfriend show. I saw a few of them. I was trying to figure out which one to play, and wow, a couple of them made me chuckle. Every so often, I might go back old school. Do I have them anymore? I don't know. I used to have all my old. Oh, do I? No. Probably threw it out. But yeah, I used to have all my little props. My two props I used. What a low budget operation this is. Hopefully for Christmas time, I'm going to step my game up. Um, again, if I go into scoring, hopefully there is no coronavirus shutdowns because I need my $9,000 for the three months I score. Yeah, nice newer setup. Definitely have a camera that I use. Yeah, I use my computer camera. I'm going to get a snowball microphone. It's better, a better all-in-one computer and or mm, multiple monitors. I have to figure out what I'm, how that's going to work. I have to figure out how to work it, period, first of all. But enough about that. I've been rattling on so long. Let's talk about some AEW. It starts off the show, the Young Bucks versus Top Flight. I'll tell you what Top, you know what Top Flight gears re remind me of? And, and I had that twang of nostalgia. Airwolf. I miss Airwolf so much. That was such a classic TV show of the, or again, ugh, late 80s. It had to be, yeah, it had to be late 80s, early 90s. If not the mid 80s. Like someone on YouTube can correct me if my dates are wrong, but I want to say that was like the height of that show. I'll tell you what, I miss that show. I miss the helicopter. I think. Certain shows w made boys want to become certain professions. Watching that show, I'm like, yeah, I want to learn how to fly a helicopter. So that's a darn cool helicopter. But yeah, that's what Top Flight's trunks look like. It literally looked like the design. It looked like it belonged on, on like an Airwolf uniform. It looked cool. Um, they're brothers. And that was brothers versus brothers because they were going against the young bucks the bucks of youth also at one time part of bullet club but no longer though although who knows they might revive something you never know what's going through their heads um starts off the top flight goes really fast they go right after the young bucks young bucks we're kind of taking it easy for a while kind of toying with them uh, not taking the match seriously, just like they did against Private Party. But I think this time they've learned their lesson. Uh, after a little bit of that, the Young Bucks go into get into control. They did the, the power. This, this really started when the Bucks powerbombed the one brother onto the other brother's back stuck in the corner. They had a lot of Young Bucks classic tag team work, but there was no Melter Driver. The top flight did have that sky pretty well. Uh, uh, after that, the one guy 
he hit the move, and this blows my mind how people kick out of this. The standing Spanish fly is probably the most impressive move that does absolutely nothing besides makes two people flip. But it looks so amazing, though. The Spanish fly should be like undisputed finisher next to the pile driver. And any kind of pile drivers. Meltzer drivers, tombstone pile drivers, um, straight jacket pile drivers, arm trap pile drivers. Doesn't matter. Any pile driver. Automatic finish. KO. Same thing with the Spanish flocks. That looked great. It just looks so good, though. And then um, after that, both brothers fly. But one, like, literally cleared the ropes a good two feet. I mean, he went up and he landed perfectly and smoothly. Top Flight, if... <sighs> Top Flight sounds like a goofy tag team name set up for a mid-card mid -card act in Chikara. They just need to think of a better name or just call, call, call them the, the whatever brothers. Brother tag teams have always been popular. I mean, look at the Young Bucks. You have the Steiner brothers. And what other brothers? You had... um. Well, they might as well have acted like brothers. You had, I mean, the Road Warriors, Steiner Brothers, the Fabulous Rougeau Brothers. Oh, who else? I know I'm missing a few. If they weren't really, they, they looked like they were brothers. The Moon Dogs. Jeez, that's going back. Um, oh, the two fat guys. The really fat farmer guys. I forget who they were, but yeah. Imagine this literally roly poly six foot redneck who weighed 400 pounds and he had a brother. And I, for, I forget their freaking names now. Shoot. Um, but again, there's their <laughs> Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas. Yeah, <laughs> not so much. But. Again, they just need to change their name. They just sound like a Chikara, like a Chikara mid card, someone you'd find like with someone else added, like an El Generico in top flight for the King of Trios champions. But again, that was great. Um, they also did the double flip, the Huracanana from the top rope was amazing. Young Bucks, again, they they get back in control though. Uh, they did the assisted slice bread again. That should be a finisher. Any assisted move where you have someone like that. That should really be a finishing move. Um, the Young Bucks did. Uh, then we have a series of roll-ups by Top Flight. And then eventually the Young Bucks hit the BTE trigger. Which is just a, a double V trigger. Double knees to the face. To the one. Um, Young Bucks win. Solidify their win. Um, definitely cement themselves as champions. I'll tell you what. I was impressed by Top Flight. They did really good work. This was actually, and the Young Bucks just didn't squash them. Um, it seemed to go on the right time. That was pretty good. This was actually a surf and turf match. Then Jack Evans and then Helico jump top flight. And oddly enough, the Young Bucks make the save and then shake their hands. Listen. The biggest critique, the, the reason why this wasn't a Flaming Young match is that it could have been if after the Young Bucks chased away Jack Evans and Angelico, if they beat them up some more. Cement yourselves as heels. There's If you're going to be a heel team, be a heel team. Let other heels beat them up. You chase off the weaker heels and then, and then and fake the handshake and beat them up again. That would have been good. And I was like, wait for it. Wait, wh wh what? Huh? Boo, you hung bucks. They, I don't know. Cornette maybe does know what he's talking about. They don't know what they're doing. It's a whole other issue. Then we had the inner circle in Vegas, part one. They had a drink off. Uh, MJF would order moonshine and then Jericho up the ante by saying, I want the 100% the alcohol. Everclear. Uh, Everclear. I don't care what you say, is is always, always, always a bad idea. Um, then Conan shows up. Oh, that was good to see. Re, 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 they reunite 
LAX from Impact. Bravo, Conan. It's good to see. Everyone's getting their cameo a little bit. We've seen Greg the Hammer Valentine. Oh, um. Someone else had a quick cameo on AEW. Now you have Conan showing up. I wonder who's going to show up. Oh, uh, yeah, Bret Hart, Greg the Hammer Valentine. I feel like I'm missing one person. Because I mean, Jake the Snake's been there pretty consistently. Oh, DDP was there for a, for a little stint. Um, now you have... Ooh, that's not good. It's another reason to get rid of this chair. It causes freaking hamstring cramps. Not good. So yeah, you had Bret Hart, DDP, uh, Greg the Hammer, Valentine, Conan. It's pretty cool to see that. Um, Conan shows up, and there's, there's some fat guy covering tattoos. He looks like a modern day Rufus, just hanging out. Uh, Wardlow and Hagar, they just kind of like stare at each other until they started to like see who could beat up more people in a bar. Elvis was there. Hubba, 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 baby. Elvis has left the building. So yeah, that was, that was kind of fun to see. Then uh, we had Moxley in promo. Oh, major announcement. Congratulations, John Moxley and Renee Young. Um, John Moxley announced today to the world that um, I guess Renee's pregnant. Or, I hope her name is pregnant. Again, congratulations, John Moxley. I think, yeah, I, I think so. Remember, one time in the CCW, he was a titty master. Indeed. So, I'd like to think it's Renee Young. Uh, you never know. Especially the fact that he's in Florida a lot, and she's out in Las Vegas, which is Florida's here. Las Vegas is like here. California's like the uh, Yeah. Congratulations. Then uh, the next match we had Orange Cassidy taking on in Kip Sabian. This is okay. This match seemed to go on a little bit too long. There we go. That's why, because these pneumatics suck. Um, this is actually pretty good. Uh, start, uh, Orange Cassidy tried to get the hands in pockets. No, Kip Sabian wasn't having any of that nonsense. Uh, transitioned that into the headlock takedown. OC reversed it. Then they started to do the mirror wrestle. Well, of course, in the, in the beginning, Kip Sabian had him in the headlock takedown. Then eventually Orange Cassidy put him in the headlock takedown. What I like to term as mirror wrestling. So they're mirroring each other's moves. Um, Kip countered with the head scissors. Uh, Kip countered the head scissors with... A slam that looked great into an arm bar. Um, of course, Orange Cassidy got his hands in, hands in his pockets. He managed to go to the outside, and, and he was almost playing patty cake with, with Penelope Ford. I want, I want to play patty cake with Penelope P. Ford. Man, darn it. Um, then there was like a GTS. Uh, Kip saving hit a GTS gut buster. That honestly should have been the finish of the match. That looked amazing. Um. Um, Kip, Kip uh, instead, they try to go to the top rope. Kip Sabian got sh shoved off. So it's uh, Orange Cassie hitting a, a crossbody and then a tornado DDT. There, there was a botch. I think the ropes might be getting slick. I don't know if it's the dew point or just condensation from being in the ring because I, I know they show... A dark opening match. That's, that's not part of AEW Dark, but they have the dark opening match. Uh, when I went there, it was uh, two guys versus like two new upcoming guys versus the Gun Club, Billy and Austin Gun. So I know they always have like an opening dark match, kind of get the crowd psyched up. They do do the things on the screen to let people know who some of the wrestlers were. Like they had the whole. Uh, prelude the the whole story behind Jurassic Express and the Dark Order. It'd be interesting to know if they do that. Uh, I think that I think the show was about I want to say like a good from when they start stuff. It's probably like four hours. So, but then again, you had the two hour show. 
one hour dark, and then like an hour lead in where they just showed like random stuff on screen. So, uh, so again, it's actually a really fun time. I just have to see if I can get a pair of seats and being like in a two person pod bubble, but that's a whole other issue. Then, so again, the ropes were the ropes. The ropes were attacking people. Ropes do attack people, by the way. Just ask AJ Styles. It was near GTS. It just just looks, I don't know, messy. Um, Orange Cassidy hit a move. Um, oh yeah, Orange Cassidy hit the mouse trap. Pin Kip Savian. Mira came out wrecked. Took the head off Orange Cassidy. That's what you get for for messing for putting my wife through the table eight weeks. Um, of course, after that, the best friends came out. It was a good match. It just seemed to go on a little bit long. It was a cheeseburger match. Then there was a Kenny Omega and John Moxley promo. Um, they were supposed to have the contract signing there. Um, nothing happened because John Moxley got jumped be, uh, behind the stage. Stretcher stuff, typical nonsense. John Moxley's the toughest guy until he gets like clubbed from behind. Uh, Kenny Omega says, take a picture of this. He signs the contract. So in two weeks... It will be the first, yeah, the first AEW in December. Probably Kenny Omega is going to take the belt. So that'll be two weeks. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens ne next week. But I'll get into that later. Then we had got more into the inner inner circle. Honestly, this was, if you watch The Hangover, you kind of get what it is. Uh, Sammy Guevara rode all over the face of MJF. A midget was involved. Um, Ortiz, I, I get him confused sometimes. Ortiz, I think, was lifting weights. Santana was, or maybe it was the other way around. One of them was feeding chickens. The other was, like, lifting weights. Chris Jericho woke up in a bed next to Elvis. And, like, they, they found a midget in a diaper. Yeah, minus it. My like, I, I was so hoping that that MJF had it like a facial tattoo, but it was just Sammy Guevara wrote on him. Whatever, Sammy Guevara was in the hot tub, and he's married to three women. Yeah, that's Vegas for you, baby. Then we have Pack versus the Blade. I thought it was gonna be the Butcher, but no. Um, Pack was right after the uh, was Pack versus the Blade of the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny. And Eddie Kingston's there on commentary. Uh, Pat goes right after the blade just stomps on. <laughs> oh, who was it that had the band? No, King Hippo had the bandage on over his over his stomach. Um, this was a little bit reversed, whereas the blade had this huge bandaid right in front, like right on his forehead. I mean, like if I put this coaster here, like that's literally where the bandaid was at. It's Florida. You need coasters or, or water gets all over everything. And by work computer is very bad. But with this, he goes right after the head of the blade. I'm surprised the blade didn't bleed. He got sent. Blade also got sent to the bike racks. They're not barricades. They're covered bike racks. At least the ones that impact, they have. They look like they have a little heft to them. Blade eventually makes his comeback with a big suplex. The bunny tries to grab Pack. Um. The but the butcher got him on the outside. The blade hit Doctor Bomb, which which is a gut wrench power bomb that actually looks really good. They had a good yay boo moment. Um, Pac has a superplex nail European uppercut. The bunny tried to distract. The butcher ate a super kick for his efforts. That was good to see. Um, it's interesting the the way that they're using Al. They're I think people liked like Ali more as the bunny than they did like cheerleader Ali. It, it just, even though it's not a great fit, it fits better with this. Mainly because this is the way they were introduced. Um, that's the one thing about AEW is that they try to mix mix up too much and get things a little too convoluted every so often. 
Uh, then let's see here. Pac hit a shooting star press, got that into the brutalizer. I don't think he was going to do the dark arrow because when you saw the distance to do the red arrow or or dark or black arrow as he calls it now, the opponent has to be relatively close. So ter terrible analogy. So here's the ring corner. Here here's here's the guy where he has to be for the black arrow because you're going to go up. You're going to do a lot of twists and spins, but you're not really gaining much distance. You're just literally jumping up and doing a whole bunch of flippy stuff. Blade was kind of out here a little bit more. So Pac took a look and like... He was smart. He didn't try to do something stupid. This is where the intelligence of wrestlers comes in. He's like, well, I could hit this, which is well within his repertoire to hit an amazing shooting star press. Um... But it, it was kind. Of, it would have been iffy. Like I saw that. I saw that distance. I'm like, no, no black arrow. He's going to do either. Some, he's going to do a moon salt, something a little simpler, and then transition into something else. And, and maybe that'll be the end of it. He transitioned into the brutalizers. That's fine. Uh, the blade taps out. Then of course he gets jumped. Butcher jumps. Pock Kingston gets in the ring. Um, Ray Phoenix tries goes for the save, and then Pentagon Junior. Cerro Miedo comes in, makes a save. You have Muerta de Triangular or Triangle de Muerta, Death Triangle. Yeah. Uh, rejoin. Again, a really good surf and turf match. And then backstage, there's more backstage shenanigans, and they announced it. Oh, something's happening backstage. Brandy got her arm broken by by Jade. Um, you can tell Brandy was on the floor. Her arm was in a folding chair, and Jade stepped on the said chair. Jade, Jade's jacked. She has like abs. I don't know if that's that's creepy or 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 attractive. I've never... Then the next match. I'll tell you what, I was impressed by this match. It was Thunder Rosa versus Serena Deep. This was a fun match. The, again, the only thing that really took away from this match were a couple botches. And, like, there were, like, two of them, and they were... The thing is, they were really obvious, too. Um, Thunder Rosa was a classic star, Colorado elbow tie-up. Uh, Thunder Rosa's working for the submission. Serena Deep was also working for the submission, but Serena Deep's a calculating heel champion. Um, she were, did, she actually, she also did a great collegiate move, the one that I actually won a match with, a double arm bar pin. I'm like, wow, I, I did that, and my coach was absolutely amazed. He's like, you know, that guy could have rolled right out. I'm like, Pff, listen, I got, listen, this is, I had the double arm bar cinched in. He wasn't going anywhere. But yeah, I won, I won a match by that move, my, my, my one collegiate win. Oh, you're so happy to say that. I locked that in. I don't know why the guy, because he tried to push off like this. I like caught his arms, spun him around, pinned him. My coach was impressed. He's like, what's that? It's like, dude, that's a double arm burp. And they're like, you're never going to get that again. I'm like, I got it once. Hey, all you need to do is get a move once and you win. Then you go on to the next match. I think I had like five or six, ma five or six matches. That was my one win. My, my crowning achievement in the world of collegiate wrestling. Um... It's so much easier just to win a match that way than for it to go like the whole seven minutes with writing time calculated and crazy. But yeah, but that was good. And um, then they trade blows a little bit. So again, I'm already, you show collegiate moves that I've actually used before. I get excited for a match. Then they had the good rope, rope running by Thunder Rose is great. Um, she got, she eventually did get caught up in the ropes. Lena Deeb. Or Serena Deep uh, did the dragon screw leg whip between the ropes. That's just, I don't know. Some wrestlers sell it really good. The, the thing is, the leg really doesn't move. It's like you're trying. It's not like a stump puller. Or like you're trying to rip the guy's arm on the side because you know that's weak. It's really hard. You have too many muscles attached to really. I mean, I, I know you can just. I've heard of dislocated hips, but generally it's not done that way. It's either in football or wrestling or rugby. 
And it's like, either you fall really the wrong... I mean, there has to be force involved to dislocate a hip. So, but still, it looked good, though. And then announcer sold it as well. Then there was uh, the leg kicks by Thunder Rosa going back a little bit into her MMA route. Um, there was a drop kick and then a butterfly, butterfly suplex. There we go. That's why I have to get rid of this chair. Tyrion Deeb hit that nice neck breaker, and, and um, when Thunder Rosa was draped under, uh, right above the second rope, that looks nasty. Not only does, does you fall against your, the rope, but then you kind of hang up, you know, almost like a draping neck breaker. But it's, it's, it looks great though. Probably hurts a lot less, but it looks amazing. Again, the whole visual aspect of it's very good. Then. Rubble shows up, distracts the referee. Britt Baker, and this is something I really wanted to see. Britt Baker hit a fisherman neckbreaker on Thunder Rose on the outside. Uh, Zelina Deeb again tried a power bomb. There was there was a couple bots. There was the the one bad bad botch in this match because it looked really obvious. Uh, they trade some more blows. You can tell they're trying to kind of go back from it. Uh, she tried. She tried an arm breaker. That wasn't gonna happen. She got rolled up. Then she did that like straight jacket, um, straight jacket neutralizer. That got Thunder Rosa down for the three counts. Zerina Deep wins. She retains her belt. This was a surf and turf match. With that being said. If there wasn't any interference and, and it wasn't as botchy, it would have been like a flaming on match, though. It was that good. Britt Baker doesn't do it for me. Uh, Rebby got in. Um, uh, then, of course, at the end, Thunder Rosa literally pulled Britt Baker from the front wrestling crowd and just started to beat on her. And I was kind of hoping. Thunder Rosa was going to throw a potato or two. That would have been that would have been visually great to see, because Thunder Rosa really doesn't take crap from anyone, as well as she shouldn't, much less a eighty-five pound dentist named Britt Baker, whose boyfriend is a hundred and fifty pound Adam Cole, baby. No, he's probably more than that, but he's a small hero. Um, so it was great to see Thunder Rosa go after Britt. I honestly wanted to see a couple of potatoes being thrown. I wanted to see Britt get bloody. That would have been good. But, oh well. Then there was Anna J and John Silver backstage. John Silver, he has to lay off the cinnamon Coca-Cola. I know it tastes utterly amazing. Oh, that's right. I know it tastes utterly amazing, but tranquilo there, buddy. Tranquilo. And Taz was on commentary for your main event of the evening. It was Brian Cage and Ricky Starks taking on Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes. Cage and... Cage is just jacked looking. Um, Cage gets in there. He goes in with Cody. Cody no sells for a little bit. He challenges that. Boom. 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 Very, again, very, very dusty like. Punches to the mush of one Brian Cage. That dirty man from California. He ain't like no southern boy, I know. But, so, he, again, with that, Cage hits an amazing backbreaker. Um... A great moment. Cage had Cody in a headlock. Had Cody to get up just, just foot stomped him. That was great. I haven't seen the foot stomp. Again, harkening back to Dusty Rhodes. That it. I am, I'm so happy for you, son. You've learned something from me. Dusty Rhodes. Ric Flair. Woo! Pele even taught you something. And of course, that... Um, other guy, 
Magnum T.A. Baby, and Mr. Satin, Mr. Wrestling, mean old Mr. Wrestling, Wrestling, Mr. Wrestling. Um, from there, yeah, <laughs> Tess started to get involved. Arn threw a chair in. Arn, you're out of here. He gets ejected. Cody. Cody got caught. Again, gets speed up a little bit more. Um, Cage. It's a big German suplex and Ricky Starks. Again, that's amazing. Darby Allen got tagged in. So once Allen quickens the pace, Darby Allen's a great wrestler. Again, he has a weird goth vibe gimmick, which kind of works and fits him. He's just small looking, though. Cody's not big. Darby Allen's. You know, I, I make I made fun of Adam Cole, baby, for being 150 pounds. Darby Allen might be 120 pounds. In fact, Thunder Rosa might be as big as Darby Allen. Indeed. But Thunder Rosa is thick in all the right spots. <laughs> so evil am I. Uh, Kobe, uh, Cody Rose also eats a spear. Starts that actually looked amazing. Uh, Darby had a lucha to destroy on Cage. The heck, did that happen? Um, Cage beats up both. He hit. There was some debate. It was either. I think it was a burning hammer. Troll said it was an. Argentine drop. I just thought an, an Argentine backbreaker was when you have someone on your back and you like drop your knees and, and you're and you in the force again they're falling on, on top of your back that, that supposedly hurts your back. This I swear looked like a burning hammer though. It, it might be the same move called different things that's always a real lot, especially with Excalibur's wrestling encyclopedia background. But yeah, and um, then eventually Brian Cage hit the avalanche trill claw on Darby Allen. She's Darby Allen's. It looked like his neck snapped. Um, Cage and Starks pick up the win. It's as good as they should. And Sparks goes right after Allen. Cody gets in. Uh, Cage beats him up. Taz beats people up. Uh, Will Hobbs comes in. He has a four. He he eyes that FTW belt, picks it up, and clonks Cody with it. Great heel turn. That was really good to see. Again, this itself, everything was a surf and turf match. So besides the length of the Kip Saban Orange Cassidy match, was probably went too long. Um, that was kind of like the low point. Even the women's match, match was a... Wait. You know, I was going to say the women's match was a surf and surf match. Oh, wait. They're not really using AEW women, though. Josh shucks. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this is... Wait, is this the first time in an a I rated an AEW women's match? It's a surf and surf match? Yeah, but it was Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb. Two NWA talents. Tells you something. Indeed. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching a little bit about the schedule this week. Um, oh, I was going to tell you something. I forgot, though. Tomorrow, I'm going to do my Survivor Series predictions. Um, I might do them myself. I don't have anything else better to do. Um, Damn it, that drunk Ijo El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Cinco Trace keeps on drinking all my tequila. So I don't know. We'll see. So, someone, maybe maybe Dr. Tom will do it. He has to redeem himself. We'll see what happens then. They'll be up sometime tomorrow. Maybe Friday morning. Friday is a very typical show. It's going to be the Friday night red wine and pizza smackdown. Saturday I'm off. Which is always nice. I'll be back Sunday to do an, a true R&R &R &R show. 
Hopefully, YouTube, I think, has gotten a little bit better. I think it all depends how many people decide to chat with me. Um, I don't know why YouTube's been iffy. It just might be a thing. Who knows? Sunspots, coronavirus, Helio Nexus 27 plague. Who knows? Um, so I'll be doing that on 